We'll now cover static, lateral directional, stability and control. The information for this topic is in chapter 28. So big picture, longitudinal motion was motion about the Y body axis. Directional motion is about the Z body axis and lateral motion is about the X body axis. Recall the definition of side slip or angle of side slip beta. If you remember from the axis systems, we had body axis and stability axis and wind axis. We had to go all the way to the stability axis to get beta. And positive beta was defined as wind in the right ear and positive beta is shown on the diagram on the page. For directional control, we define positive rudder pedal deflection and force is right pedal and it causes negative rudder deflection but a positive yawing moment and a positive yaw rate. For lateral control, we define positive roll stick deflection and force is stick right and it causes a positive composite aileron deflection positive rolling moment, and positive roll rate. Again, not every platform uses this convention, but this is the one we'll use for our class. Side slip can be compared to angle of attack, and yaw angle can be compared to pitch angle. But side slip generates not only a yawing moment, but also a rolling moment. And while angle of attack has a great usefulness, Side slip has little use except for a crosswind landing. Since side slip is a factor in both lateral and directional stability, such stability is going to be measured using steady heading side slips. The yawing moment N of an aircraft about at CG is affected by the angle of side slip, the rudder deflection, and to some degree the aileron deflection. So we can approximate a model of the yawing coefficient C sub n as C sub n zero, which the yawing coefficient at zero beta, plus C n beta times beta, plus C n delta r times delta r, plus C n delta a times delta a. When the aircraft is in directional flight equilibrium, the yawing moment coefficient is zero. And this goes hand in hand with lateral flight equilibrium as well. So relative to the equilibrium, we see that change in yawing moment due to changes in beta, delta R, and delta A is shown by the equation at the bottom of the page. For static analysis, the aircraft is assumed to be in equilibrium symmetric flight with a side slip angle of zero and the controls fixed. Delta R and delta A are also zero. This gives us a linear equation and a y equals mx plus b type of relationship where the y-intercept cn0, the slope cn beta, and our x is beta. But again, in symmetric equilibrium, beta equals zero, so cn0 is going to be zero. Directional static stability is the ability of an aircraft to yaw or weathercock into the wind to maintain directional equilibrium. A directionally statically stable aircraft generates a restoring yawing moment when disturbed from yaw equilibrium attitude. In other words, a side slip disturbance. We see here that the slope of that equation or CN beta needs to be positive for a restoring moment to oppose the change in side slip. If we look at the aircraft from above, or the top view, we see that side forces ahead of the center of gravity are destabilizing, while side forces behind the center of gravity are stabilizing. The main contribution of the wing 
to directional stability is due to any sweep angle. Swept back wings improve directional static stability. Conversely, swept forward wings, like in the X-29, reduce directional static stability. But the contribution of the wing is small compared to the fuselage and the vertical tail or the fin. So in conceptual design, the wing can often be neglected. The fuselage in general creates destabilizing contribution to directional stability. The fuselage contribution is not usually estimated alone since it's influenced by the wing geometry and the wing location on the fuselage. So we typically combine the wing and the fuselage when analyzing directional stability. So the coefficient CN beta wing fuselage is typically a negative number. Again, the wing fuselage is directionally destabilizing. Aircraft consisting of wing fuselage combination alone are directionally unstable. A directionally stabilizing component must be added to the configuration to produce a directionally stable aircraft, hence the need for a vertical tail. When flying in side slip, the vertical tail produces a side force that generates the necessary restoring yawing moment to counter the change in side slip angle beta. Like we saw in longitudinal stability, the aircraft can have downwash off the main wing that impacts the horizontal tail. But likewise, the vertical tail can get impacted by a downwash angle that we call sigma, or sidewash in this case. So the local angle of attack at the vertical tail is the side slip angle beta plus the side wash angle sigma. Assuming small side slip and side wash angles, the cosine of the, that sum is approximately one and the yawing moment produced by the vertical tail is given by the equation nvt equals yvt times lvt. The side force on the tail is then derived in the next two equations with Q bar being dynamic pressure and SVT is the vertical tail area. All of that leads to the equation at the bottom of the page. So the yawing moment due to the vertical tail stability derivative can be expressed in nonlinear terms as shown, with V sub V is the vertical tail volume ratio, eta VT is the vertical tail efficiency. And we can see typical values for the vertical tail volume ratio for various airplanes in the table. So the contribution to directional stability is CN beta of the vertical tail is the vertical tail volume ratio times the vertical tail efficiency times the lift curve slope of the vertical tail times the quantity one plus the side wash factor. The side wash factor is difficult to estimate. Data is usually obtained from wind tunnel tests. Contribution from the wing to the side wash factor is due to, to asymmetric flow structure and yawing motion, more pronounced for low aspect ratio wings. Here's an example using the US DATCOM, but typically CN beta VT is a positive number. So the total static directional stability ignoring wing alone contribution and power effects is CN beta equals CN beta of the wing fuselage plus CN beta of the vertical tail. And this is the stick fixed directional stability since we did not consider the effects of a free floating rudder. So here's our summary of directional stability. We have our stability derivative CN beta called the weather vane or weathercock stability. It needs to be positive. It's the primary directional stability derivative. The other ones can be have the sign shown there, but ultimately CN beta is the overriding stability derivative.
once again we see that things that can generate a side force in a side slip condition that are ahead of the CG are destabilizing. And two examples are shown here. What about this case where there is no vertical tail? That would be a tricky aircraft to control directionally. The rudder is the primary directional control. The rudder is deflected, there's a change in side force on the vertical tail, and that changes the yawing moment about the CG. Again, positive delta R generates positive change in side force. Positive delta R generates negative yawing moment. The rudder must be designed to provide sufficient control authority to compensate for these four items. Adverse yaw, crosswind takeoff and landing, asymmetric power, and spin recovery. And the definitions for all those are listed in the table on the lower right. During turns, adverse yaw is yawing moment acting in the opposite direction of the turn. It's mainly due to drag differences on the wing the effect is usually small, except for high-speed turns. During landing, the airplane cannot fly in symmetric equilibrium, but must land along the runway. And rudder must be able to counter the yawing moment due to crosswind to maintain proper orientation. The rudder must be sufficient to counter yawing moment due to asymmetric engine thrust. The change in the airplane's yawing moment due to rudder deflection is mostly caused by the change in the side force acting on the vertical tail. The definition of the equation delta CN is shown in the middle of the slide. Using the vertical tail volume ratio V sub V and efficiency A to sub V, we can derive an equation in the middle of the page that shows our rudder control effectiveness. This value is typically negative for conventional aircraft. The actual rudder effectiveness A sub R can be found using the lift curve slope of the vertical tail times the parameter tau, and you can get that from a graph similar to the one shown on the bottom right. If the contribution of other control surfaces is neglected, the total yawing moment is given as Cn equals Cn beta times beta plus Cn delta R times delta R. In this case, we would assume that the aileron con contribution is negligible or zero. And again, during steady side slip, we know that the yawing moment coefficient is zero. So we can derive an equation of what the rudder deflection is as a function of Cn beta, Cn delta R, and beta. Aircraft with higher degree of static directional stability require larger rudder deflection to maintain constant side slip. Assuming no residual hinge moment and no tab, the linear model for the rudder hinge moment is given with the following equation. CH R equals CH beta times beta plus CH delta R times delta R. For conventional aircraft, CH beta is typically positive, while CH delta R is typically negative. When the rudder pedal is released or stick free, the rudder is free floating. And we see that CHR is going to be zero. The floating angle of the rudder in side slip motion is shown by the equation delta R free equals minus CH beta over CH delta R times beta. Again, for typical aircraft, CH beta is positive and CH delta R is negative, which means 
the ratio of those two is going to be negative. So the floating rudder tends to align itself with the flow. If the rudder floats to the left when the aircraft side slips to the right, and the rudder floating angle has the same sign as the side slip angle. The difference between stick fixed and stick free directional stability is due to the rudder floating angle, delta R free. The rest of the slide shows the various equations that ultimately result in CN beta vertical tail free. It has V sub V, eta sub V, the lift curve slope of the vertical tail times the quantity one plus D sigma over D beta plus tau CH beta over CH delta R. We now show the equation that relates CN beta of the vertical tail free to CN beta of the vertical tail fixed. And we see that CN beta of the vertical tail free is going to be less than CN beta of the vertical tail fixed. The total airplane stick free directional stability, ignoring wing only contribution and power effects, is given by the equation at the bottom of the page. Next, we'll cover the concept of rudder lock. At low side slip angles, the rudder floating angle is usually lower than the angle required for steady side slip. So pilot needs to supply pedal forces for the side slip to be steady. At high side slip angles, the rudder floating angle is bigger than the angle required for steady side slip. The pilot needs to apply opposite pedal forces. This phenomenon is undesirable. Rudder control is not intuitive beyond rudder lock point. It may require considerable pedal force to break the rudder lock. To prevent rudder lock, we can use tabs to alter hinge moment coefficients in the floating characteristics of the rudder, or we can add dorsal fins. Dorsal fins shed vortices to energize the flow around the vertical tail, ultimately delaying fin stall. We've covered yawing moment. Now let's switch to rolling moment. The rolling moment L of an aircraft about its CG is affected by the angle of side slip, the aileron deflection, and to some degree, the rudder deflection. And just like we derived an equation for the yawing moment, we can also derive a similar equation for the rolling moment. And in lateral flight equilibrium, that coefficient for rolling moment is zero. The bottom equation shows the change in rolling moment due to changes in beta, delta A, and delta R. Lateral static stability is the ability of the airplane to maintain wings level attitude after a disturbance in side slip. Lateral, statically stable aircraft generate a restoring rolling moment when disturbed from wings level attitude. In other words, a bank angle disturbance. Let's view static stability with respect to an aircraft that gets a disturbance causing the right wing to drop. A stable aircraft will generate a rolling moment to bring the wing back up to wings level. A neutrally stable aircraft will just be happy at the new bank angle with the wing lower to the right and stay constant. An unstable aircraft will continue to roll off to the right. For stability analysis, the airplane is assumed in equilibrium, again in symmetric flight with beta equals zero, and in the stick's fixed condition with delta R and delta A equals zero. Here we see that the rolling moment coefficient and as a function of beta, the side slip, and we see that that slope needs to be negative.
Here's a more detailed depiction of why the slope of CL beta needs to be negative to be statically stable. A more negative CL beta indicates a more statically stable aircraft. The main contributors to lateral static stability are wing dihedral, wing sweep, fuselage wing relation position and placement, and the vertical tail. Dihedral angle is a spanwise inclination of the wing with respect to the horizon. The aircraft on the left shows a positive dihedral. The aircraft on the right shows a negative dihedral, which is sometimes called anhedral. The dihedral effect is a major contributor to lateral static stability. In the presence of side slip, the dihedral angle leads to different lift between left and right wings and generates a rolling moment. We want the rolling moment to be restored to wings level. Here's a more detailed depiction of the dihedral effect using vector analysis. Bottom line, rolling moment opposing the roll disturbance, we need that to be stabilizing. In side slip motion, the wing sweep angle causes a lift imbalance between the left and right wings. A rolling moment is induced. Swept back wings increase lateral static stability, or positive dihedral. Forward swept wings, like the X-29, decrease lateral static stability, a negative dihedral. The rule of thumb, 10 degrees of wing sweep produces 1 degree of effective dihedral. While the effect of the fuselage alone on lateral static stability is negligible, the position of the wing on the fuselage has significant contribution to lateral static stability. This contribution is hard to estimate analytically, but you can see a high wing is stabilizing rolling moment and is generated in side slip, so it has a positive effective dihedral. A low wing is destabilizing rolling moment negative effective dihedral. In side slip motion, the vertical tail generates a side force, and this side force typically acts above or below the airplane's longitudinal axis, and that generates a rolling moment. We want CN beta, the vertical tail, to be positive. If the fin is on top, like you typically see in aircraft, then that's laterally stabilizing. The rolling moment arm of the vertical tail side force is affected by angle of attack. It's usually smaller at higher angle of attack. So the vertical tail contribution to static lateral stability is less effective at high angles of attack. The total aircraft static lateral stability can be expressed as CL beta equals CL beta of the wing plus CL beta of the wing fuselage plus CL beta of the vertical tail. And again, the wing and the wing fuselage is not accurate when we do our analytic predictions. So we have to use empirical data or wind tunnels. Let's now examine the propeller effects on lateral directional stability. Propeller aircraft have three major effects, slipstream, engine torque effect, and asymmetric disc loading or p-factor. The p-factor tends to generate a left yaw. Engine torque tends to generate a left roll, and the slipstream tends to generate a left yaw.
Here's the lateral stability derivatives in summary. Cl beta is the primary static stability derivative. It's called dihedral effect and it needs to be negative. The other derivatives are shown, but the overall driver for lateral stability is Cl beta. The primary lateral controls are the ailerons. An alternate type of lateral control is spoilers. Again, convention is composite deflection is positive if, if it produces a positive rolling moment or right wing down. Ladder directional control is coupled. For rudder deflection, we get a rolling moment, and this induced rolling moment must be countered by ailerons. Aileron deflection induces a yawing moment, and this induced yawing moment must be countered by the rudder. The flight test method to evaluate static lateral directional stability is the steady heading side slip. What we'll do is put a steady side slip beta on the aircraft and then adjust the bank angle to maintain our steady heading. We'll record data at different side slip angles beta and the data will be the bank angle, the aileron force, the rudder deflection, the rudder force, and the aileron deflection. We'll then graph these and fair curves through the data, looking for general trends, linearity, and if there's rudder lock or rudder force lightning.